The biggest problem in the formative measurement idea is the idea that the indicators cause the construct. There are also statistical issues in how these models are specified and how particularly the models are identified. I will explain a couple of these issues in this video. There are a couple more, but they are not as important as, as these two issues. The root of the problem is that a formative model where we specify this uh, latent variable as a function of these uh, observed variables in three in this example and this unobserved error term is not identified in itself. It's like a regression analysis without a dependent variable basically. It's not identified because these correlations between these uh, three indicators are free and that consumes all our degrees of freedom and we don't have any infor more information for estimating these paths or the variance of the error term. So the degrees of freedom is negative. There are uh, a couple of ways around this problem. The most commonly recommended way is that we add two normal indicators. The literature on formative measurement calls these reflective indicators. So we add, uh, we specify that this uh, latent variable here actually is a common factor for these two measurements. And these measurements are added there for identification of the model. So this leads to uh, an interesting problem. And uh, the, the problem is actually that this uh, latent variable here is now defined by these uh, two normal indicators instead of these three formative or causal indicators. So these, these uh, factors, these indicators, these measure one and measure two actually give this latent variable its identity and meaning. So I have written a couple of papers about this topic, but the, the, the problem essentially is that if these um, causal or formative indicators are not valid measures of this latent variable, but these, uh, in, these indicators are, then uh, these weights or regression coefficients here will simply be estimated as zero. So we have uh, a normal latent variable measured with two indicators, and then we have three unrelated indicators that don't really have any relationship with the latent variable defined by these two variables here. So that's one problem. Another way of thinking about this is that uh, if we have these uh, two indicators here that measure the latent variable, then uh, these three indicators here at the bottom are, you don't need them. So you can just uh, define the model and measure it, it normally with these two indicators. And there are no problems with that. And that's of course doesn't go well with the idea that these are, uh, that some concepts must be measured with these uh, formative indicators. So that's one problem. And uh, what's the, the cause of this phenomenon that the meaning of this latent variable comes from these uh, two measures instead of these three measures is that we have this error term here. And uh, the error term guarantees that, that whatever these indicators represent, then uh, this error term will make, the, because it's unrelated with these three indicators here, it makes the latent variable to be a common factor of these two indicators. So if these uh, three indicators are conceptually unrelated to uh, whatever these two indicators represent, then the error term here will compensate for that. And we are basically just modeling the, uh, the error term with these Three, indica three indicators instead of uh, whatever we think that these causal indicators here cause. So that's one problem and uh, how we deal with that problem, we can of course eliminate that problem by eliminating the error term from the model. But that, that gives us, uh, leads to another problem. So uh, let's consider this kind of model. So here, this is not a latent variable anymore because, because this, um, this formative latent variable is actually just a weighted sum of these indicators. There's no error term. This is like a regression analysis without an error term. Then uh, how do we set these different weights? So we create an index based on three different indicators. We set uh, these weights. The normal way of defining this or use or specifying this kind of model is that we have this latent variable here without an error term. And then we have another latent variable that we want to explain with this latent variable. And we have a regression relationship. Specifying a model like that defines these weights so that they, they maximize this path. And is that problematic or not? 
Well, it is problematic because if we want to test, for example, whether this beta here is, is zero or not, whether the beta R has an effect, or whether this formative LV has an effect on this other latent variable, then setting these weights so that the beta is as large as possible is probably uh, the worst possible way that you can create an index. So if you want to test if something exists, then trying to uh, use any correlations in, in your data to make your estimate as large as possible, it's not a good estimation principle. So there's possible positive bias. There's also another problem is that if we uh, set these weights so that this beta is as large as possible, then the weights uh, actually depend on whatever this other latent variable is. And uh, this leads to a problem called interpretational confounding in this literature. So the meaning of this uh, latent variable here that is supposed to be caused by these three formative indicators actually depends on, on what's the other latent variable, what other variables we have in the model. And that's, uh, that's undesirable. So if you, uh, if you think, uh, think about the stock index, would it make sense that the stock index would be different depending on who is using the index? I don't think so. It should be the same. So the meaning of, of the, uh, the index should be the same across studies, which means that these uh, indicators, these weights also must stay the same. Then there's also uh, the assumption that if these indicators here have any effect on this other latent variable, then they must be fully mediated by this formative latent variable. So let's uh, consider socioeconomic status. So that's our formative latent variable. One of the indicators is, is, measure, is uh, your edge case. And then we want to explain child's education with parents' social economic status. Is it reasonable to assume that the parents' education has no other causal effect on child's education than through the full mediation through social economic status? That is uh, clearly unreasonable. So the full mediation assumption here is also unreasonable. So what's the, uh, what's the alternative? The, the solution is to uh, define these weights based on theory. So, so you uh, set the weights based on your understanding of the phenomenon instead of trying to estimate the weights empirically. And that leads to, uh, to index construction. So instead of doing this uh, complicated latent variable model that possibly has an error term, we just take the indicators and we, we take a mean or we take a sum or we take a weighted sum and we do that before our estimation and we define the weights for the index construction based on existing understanding of the phenomenon or the theory. And I have another video of how you can actually do that and how you justify index construction. So that's clearly a, a good approach, a, a lot better approach than trying to specify these formative latent variable model.